Okay, so let's say we want to place some grout tubes in the bottom of our panels or any uh, sort of object for that argument's sake, right? Um, we can come and place a component. Now, basically, if you remember when we came into our configuration area in the precast area for the very, very first time, the system synchronized um, with all the stuff to do with the precast tools. Now, in C Drive, Program Data, Autodesk, Structural Precast 2018, Families, ENU, ENU meaning English, obviously you've also got French and German. Um, all these families get synchronized together with the current model. Um, so if you keep adding to this area for your families, they will continue to be synced with every single model that you work on. Um, if you come into your mounting parts area, you can see we've got grout tubes, bushings. So if you need to create your own families, you use one of these to, as a basis to start. With grout tubes obviously being the, the object that you see here. So if you want to go and place a grout tube, we come in. And we pick a point, and then we pick another point, and then we pick another point. But obviously, there's no uh, no uh, mathematics revolved around edge distances and um, placement and all that. So what you can do is you can actually use instead of manually placing all those. Um, obviously, I can still place them in elevation. That's no problems. What we want to do is we want to use um, some automation to do that and what we'll do is we'll use a bit of a dynamo script here to allow you to automate exactly what it is you want to do here now obviously this could be anything you'd like um, I'm not going to cl lay claim to this script because I didn't write this a good friend of mine did um, I just modified it to help me do what I wanted to do so let's say I want to go and I want to place a bunch of grout tubes along the bottom of my panel. So basically from here, I need to select a series of faces that I want to work with. I want to select the grout tube that I want to place, the uh, maximum distance from one edge, and the maximum distance between the elements, um, and then the number of grout tubes that I want to place inside a panel. And again, this is just an example. Okay. So I would come in here and I would pick one face and another face and then I would hit finish and I would hit play and when I do it goes and executes that script and allows me to place all those um, objects inside there at an automated way to create all that for me. Okay, Obviously I might want to if I wanted to have them selected and facing the other direction, I would choose the other face, right? So I would come in, let's say delete those, and then select faces, and you know, if you just hover over an area here, uh, you should be able to either do the old orbit around to the other side, pick one face, pick the other face, and pick, finish, and play exactly the same way, and you can see now Based on the face that I picked, it's gone and placed those grout tubes. The important part to note here is that the, the manual items that it has placed in here are, are still standalone. Okay, so let's close that. The system isn't going to know that these grout tubes are part of this wall until we tell the system that they, need, that they are part of the wall. Same goes for this rebar. Right now, this is all done using a tool called mounting parts. So there is a button on the precast uh, toolbar called mounting parts. Now, if I press this button, the system goes and checks the volume of each one of the panels to see if there's anything else that needs to be added to the particular assemblies. So you can see here straight away, it's added nine elements. One, two, three, four, five, six grout tubes and three rebars. So there's your nine elements and it's added to one, two, three assemblies. So now when you go and hover over it, you can see that those elements have been added 
to that particular part easily and um, not with any great difficulty. This function should always be run before generating drawings of any sort.